Hey there folks, welcome back. Do you know what presumptive testing is? Or field testing? I hope that you don't. I hope you never got into that kind of trouble. Cody Gregg did get into that kind of trouble. This is a guy in Oklahoma. He is a homeless man who was pulled over, or stopped I guess you can say, for not having a light on his bicycle. So police can do stuff like that to you. You already know. You're, I, I've talked about it a million times. You're not really free and they have all these loopholes and things that they can do to stop you, harass you, search you, do whatever to you if they want to. And in this case, they saw a shirtless guy on a bike and said, hey, let's go screw with him and stopped him because he didn't have a light. And they found in his possession powdered milk. But they said it was cocaine because they did a presumptive test, a field test, and determined it was cocaine. So they arrested him, sent him to jail, put him on a judge, put him on a fifty thousand dollar bond, which he can't pay. He's homeless. He sat in jail, waiting to go to court. Was advised to his Oklahoma County Jail, which is well known for mold overcrowding and an abnormally high suicide rate. By the way, look it up. Oklahoma County Jail, um, gets advised by public defender, of course, which is as bad as defending yourself in court. A public defender is useless. So this is why justice system doesn't work. I talk about this all the time. Sent this guy to jail, advised for him to get out of the jail and to get a lesser plea because apparently he wasn't going away. He was going to go to jail, period. So he may as well plead guilty, which he does. He takes the advice and pleads guilty. And then the lab report comes back after he's been sitting in jail for months, by the way. So they passed sentence and jailed him without having the lab report. And it turns out it wasn't cocaine. It was powdered milk. Powdered milk that he got to, from a local food pantry, which is what he told them when he got arrested. But they don't listen to you. You're a criminal. He had a prior marijuana charge or something like that, and damn it, that's enough. That's enough. That guy is dirt. Let's put him away for life, or as long as we can. And they threw the book at this guy. Even after he pleaded guilty and did everything that he was supposed to do, was a good little boy, and they locked him up for 15 years for powdered milk. You content with that? He shouldn't be. And, of course, now he's not in jail anymore because they had to let that go. They had to throw it out. But they cannot give him back his time or his anguish or anything else that was done to him. Anything else that he lost during that time period. It can't be recovered. And that's the big problem here, isn't it, with people that get locked away. If they didn't do anything or if you gave them a heavy-handed sentence then you've made them suffer for nothing. And this guy suffered for nothing. And it's not the first time this has happened. And I know that you can sit there and say, oh, well, he can sue the police department. He can sue. Who's going to pay for that? He's not getting a public defender for suing the city or suing the state. That isn't going to happen. That has to come out of pocket. And that's a long stretch for guys homeless. Unless someone pays for an attorney for him or an attorney in Oklahoma decides to... Um, go pro bono because it pissed them off which is not likely it's rare that an attorney will go pro bono that's that's not likely to happen that's not likely to happen and this isn't the first time this sort of thing has happened and if he did anyways he wouldn't get much you don't really get much from that the, the, there's other cases and you can look these up there was the guy uh, not too long ago I think this was in Florida was arrested for possession of cocaine because, or suspicion of cocaine because of the powder that was on the floor in his car. He sat in jail, and then eventually when the lab report came back, it was drywall, which is what he told them. And there was another guy, I think this was also in Florida, with the crystals. There were crystal-like substances on his floor, and they field tested it, and it was methamphetamine. Only it wasn't. It was the glaze from a donut. <laughs> it was donut glaze. It was freaking sugar. Okay, crystallized sugar. And he was able to sue the city. I remember that one. He was able to sue because he spent some time in jail for nothing. 
and I think his settlement was thirty-seven five, thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. But it's not enough for them to learn their lesson about harassing people when they don't have to, about making false arrests, about making false claims on drug tests and putting people in jail who are innocent. It happens all the time. Nobody seems to care unless it happens to them. Nothing in this system is changing. It's something that I, I wanted to dig my heels into a little bit more was that case in Boston. Uh, this was a couple of years ago where it was discovered that as many as 24,000 drug cases were misrepresented because of false evidence. Uh, the lab reports were falsified and they tried to blame it on a single lab technician, like only one person was responsible and we're supposed to believe that and the entire time the state of Massachusetts has been fighting because those were convictions, those people are sitting in jail and they're sitting in jail with false evidence but Massachusetts doesn't want to revisit those cases and it's like if you know they're innocent or they may be innocent because of false charges why won't you review the cases well, because I guarantee you, more than one lab technician is involved with that, and they don't want you to know how deep the rabbit hole goes. It's absolutely sickening. I just wanted to talk about that real quick, because, like I said, that is a pet peeve of mine, how we have, we have justice, and we have fairness, and people are free, and, you know, you have freedom of speech, and the police are here to serve and protect the public. They're not police, they're law enforcement officers. And the law is not always a good thing. The law isn't there to protect the people necessarily. It's there to protect interests. And it's in their interest to try to make an example out of people who are selling drugs. And you want to know what the real problem is with people selling drugs? They can't tax it. They can't tax it because they sure do have a drastic change of heart when they can. Like with marijuana, which is legal almost everywhere or will be shortly in the United States. They found a way around it to tax it. And now, oh, marijuana's fine. We don't care about that anymore. Have you seen Reefer Madness? Look up Reefer Madness. If you've never seen this film, it was a government propaganda film put out by the U.S. government and put in theaters to try to convince people that marijuana is evil. And they talk about, in this movie, about how um, you can become instantly addicted from smoking marijuana and that, uh, and that you will become homicidally, criminally insane. I'm serious. They try to convince you that you're going to turn into an axe murderer. They, I, I think there was somebody that they talked about in the movie where they were like uh, some 16-year-old that murdered his entire family with an axe because he needed money for more reefer. <laughs> the movie's hilarious to look at, but look at the shift. This is what the government tried to feed you. But, oh, wait, we can make money off of this? It's taxable? Marijuana is fine. It's fine. Sooner or later, cocaine will be fine. And they'll tax that. And all these people will have sat in jail for nothing. They only care about taxing it. I know, I went way off on a tangent there and forgot poor, about poor Cody Gregg, the homeless guy who got arrested and sentenced to 15 years for powdered milk before they even finished the lab results. Sat in jail for months. For months. It could have been a lot worse. Pled guilty... Because why? Because the system is rigged. And don't they? Is, is, do public defenders ever do anything but tell you to plead guilty? What is the point? What's the point of getting represented when the representation that you're receiving is part of the problem? I'm just saying. Anyways, do you get where I'm coming from? Please do give the video a thumbs up. I would sure appreciate it. Share it if you can. Subscribe if you're new. If you want to help the channel out, there are links for that down below. Every little bit helps, and I sure do appreciate it. If you have anything, that, any points or anything to say about it, put it in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. So, what can I say? Stay tuned, folks, because there is more to come.